edition of International Forum. I am Wilson Omasha. A big thanks to my colleagues that stood in for me while I was on leave. Yeah, all work and no play, they say, make junk a dull, but really have to go out there, relax, recuperate, and, uh, you know, when they was like, you know, walk, 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 walk. So, anyhow, we'll <laughs> take it that way. With me here in the studio to talk about uh, the poor land protest. Yeah, they are protesting. What are they protesting about? They discover one group of the Polish side want to exit the EU. Don't forget Brexit. It took them years to really get to the core of them living and are still negotiating terms and conditions. And now 80% of Poland citizens are saying no to exiting the European Union, that they are in for it. Why would there be any rumor, speculation, hinting that they want to pull out of Brexit, or oh, sorry, of the EU? And the populace came out en masse to say, no, enough is enough. Why some others are giving the reason why they don't want to pull out from the EU? Because I have a lecturer from Uniben, a clergyman, uh, Jimmy, to welcome Honorable Frank Amigo. Welcome to International Forum. Yeah. I appreciate your coming. Thank it's you, been a while. I went off camera. Uh, I went off camera. There's for a evidence while. that you actually went on leave. Seriously. Yeah. Really. The sign is following you. Uh, that'll be story yeah. for another time. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Before we dive into uh, this discussion, let's take a look at some stories making rounds globally. Then move straight down to what is really going on right Gov now in Texas. COVID vaccination. Texas governor, uh, yeah, uh, bought uh, a man out on the vaccination. Uh, I was talking about so many controversies emanating from uh, uh, these vaccines. Many have opinions about it. Some are for it. Some are uh, against it. Some are saying that it should be mandatory. Others are saying, look, it cannot be mandatory. It should be by choice. So that has been uh, the tough, say, tough uh, situation. We talk about COVID-19 vaccine administration. Some are saying you can't force me to take it. Others are saying, look, it's a must to safeguard the populace. I know in America, they believe in freedom okay and they went to court and the texas governor greg abbott's plan or bans mandatory vaccination in the state saying if you don't want to get vaccinated cool no problem fine it's okay if you want to get vaccinated better for you and for the society so they're making it something what of a choice you just can't impose it on someone that's what the governor stood out to say after so many deliberations Mm. What do you feel about it? Mandatory, not mandatory, left for you to decide. Let me shut down to North Korea, where right now King John On is saying he want to make North Korea a fierce military base. He used the word invincible military. When we talk about invincible military, it has to do with the arsenal. I want to talk about the arsenal. You can't talk about that what I'm mentioning the A bomb, the nuclear bomb, the fusion power, and that is what they've been working on, talking about. Even the time of uh, Donald Trump, they had a sit down saying North Korea don't have the right to, you know, go into nuclear weapon production or will I say, uh, you know, a missile, inter ballistic missile that have large or huge destructive capabilities. Yes, that is what is up right now. But Kim Jong un the Supreme Leader of North Korea, vowed to make his military an invincible one. The series of tests being run on military when you talk about missiles, armed missiles, tests here and there, despite the fact that Joe Biden raised an eyebrow, the young man is not listening. What has been talking about it is not listening. He said, look, we are in for this full time so that North Korea will gain its respect in the Korea Peninsula and at large command global respect and attention. That is the aim of this young man. He started with his grandfather to his father. And right now is his turn to continue what they call the legacy of the King Jong Un dynasty. He is the youngest among the kids, but they have so much faith in him that he would make out something from this. 
how do you think this will pan out? Should the world become afraid? Should the Korea Peninsula become very, very afraid? What about American allies? Are they going to be affected by all this? We keep watching and ours is to report back to you. Now let's move straight down to what is happening in China. We are flawed. I mean, massive flawed. High uh, 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 as, like, I, I just can't talk about the centimeter of the flawed or the manage of the flawed like a monsoon ravaged some part of China as mines were shut down because of the rapid flood. Yes, that is what they are talking about. The rains are like unprecedented in China and this cannot be dissociated from, uh, uh, you know, uh, the environmental pollution, global warming, ozone layer depletion you just name it and Chinese has been worst hit this season you get to see massive flood overcoming you know overpowering houses high-rise structures workplaces even the coal mine where this person is normally earning a living from has been ransacked by flooding and of course power shortage many persons lost their lives and they're still trying to scramble out of that situation because right now modern nature the chinese fair so to speak is not really happy about what is going on in the environment hence uh, global warming i believe that the, the chinese government led by Xing jinping will be able to do something positive something positive about it our heart and of course our deep felt sympathy goes up to the chinese people they will get out of this strong after all what doesn't kill you makes you stronger finally let's come straight down to africa what is that in ethiopia and the tigray region they call it a great crisis or tiger crisis depends on the way you want to pronounce it because right now it's like everyone is standing their ground Ethiopian army don't want to back down and got the, the 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 Tigray army the rebels so to speak don't want to back down and right now Ethiopian army they have launched coordinated attacks against northern Tigray region and it's like nobody wants to you know hold back okay it's like negotiations are filled even for aids to get to the Tigray region is becoming almost impossible because of the real situation of the war in that region. The UN have spoken about it. AU have spoken about it. But how come it's like no one is listening? We get to see thousands fleeing their region, thousands moving away from their region, just trying to seek for peace in other country like Somalia. Yeah, but the rebels, the soldiers in Tigray region. They don't want to back down. They are still fighting, saying they have the right to autonomy. They have the right to succeed. They have the right to independence. They want to be on their own. And that's the reason why the fight is still raging on. Let's see how they can resolve this conflict. After all, it's better to judge war than war war. Well, I haven't said that. It's not time for us to go into the discussion for today. And I still have uh, 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 Honorable Frank Amigo. All we'll return after this break. We'll dive down into the discussion standing before us or sitting before us or before us on the table. Don't go anywhere. This is International Forum with Wilson on Marshall. Welcome on board. Thank you so much for staying tuned to this channel. If you just joined us, this is International Forum. It's all about the Poland protest amidst fears of an exit. 80% of the Polish population are saying a huge no to this. Why some others are saying, come on, let's do this. We have so much to gain. Don't forget that it was all about Brexit some years ago. And right now, what do you think will happen in Poland? Honorable, Yes. it's not something new when you see countries agitated to leave a particular group of conclaves so to speak it was brexit some years back it took them years to get to where they were or uh, where they are today and right now we're having this rumor this speculation uh, these unfounded uh, uh statement or comment by some Polish citizens saying they want to exit the european union what are your thoughts about this well uh, actually, the, the Prime Minister denied it. He denied it. And in the midst of his denial, uh, he's doing something contrary to what he's saying. That's why people are now very uh, uh, angry 
at the actions that he has taken. If you had or you still have the courts at your beck and call, mm -hmm. it's a democratic nation. Why would the court rule that the EU law is, is not compatible with uh, Polish constitution? Is, is, is it a new thing? It's not a new thing. So for you to say uh, we will do some reforms in judiciary, a lot of opposition parties, especially uh, the civic uh, platform party uh, le led by Mr. Tusk, is saying that that court ruling on Sunday that's last week. Yeah. That not just on Thursday they do the, they, they gave the ruling. On Sunday the protest started. Mm. That that court ruling ought not to have been, because it is a democratic nation. If there's anything to adjust in the constitution, we should be part and parcel of it. They are the House of Parliament. They should we should be debated. But the premise I see insisting, thinking that it is is a, is a political uh, tension created by the civic uh, platform party against their PIS party. But I see beyond party matters. For people to come en mass to the federal, uh, the, the nation's capital, that's uh, Warsaw, mm. about 100,000 came out. And that happened like that in about 100 cities and, and towns. And that does not uh, pretend uh, peace in the first instance. Poland is just uh, barely 38 million people in that land, and they are doing well as a nation. They are seeing it. If you want to leave EU, there are better ways in which you want to leave EU. First, as critics have said, they are expecting in 2028 about 142 million euros from uh, from EU to uh, Poland. Poland. So if you are making such a move, you are saying that we don't need that money again. So it, it will be a kind of a, a, a very unwise thing to leave a people that you are expecting so much from in a short while, in the next uh, five years or there about five, six years. So uh, the, the people on uh, the, the last scale are saying that what the Prime Minister is doing, using the courts to do, is not in tandem with their mutual coexistence. Hmm. More so because they knew where they were coming from, come from uh, uh, commensalism. Yeah. They, they came from there, that they don't want to go back there. That going back to the former life pattern they had uh, will not be the best, to the best interest of the people at large. Hmm. We have about uh, we have 27 nations making up the EU. Though the, the, the aspect Hungary is taking is not the right thing they should do. Germany is insisting, uh, France is insisting, that Poland should go back to what uh, they were doing in that relationship in the EU. But Hungary is supporting the Prime Minister, the present Prime Minister, that he could go ahead. But a large percentage of the people of Poland want to stay back in EU. Because if they leave EU, they are afraid that the, the system of government will change and by that impoverish the citizens of Poland. Mm. But the Prime Minister is insisting that he is not planning to exit Poland. He is saying that, and that is contrary to the move that he is making, that the EU law is not compatible with the Polish uh, constitution. Is it about the EU law right now and the Polish constitution that is at uh, loggerhead or personal interest citing it from the angle of the Prime Minister who seems to be saying one thing and doing the other? Yeah, that, that's the best way to propagate such a move. Mm -hmm. What he has in mind is to have a road grip to power, to change a lot of things that he could not change with this uh, in the presence of, of EU. He wants to exit uh, from EU by crying out loud that the, uh, the EU law does not agree with their constitution. And it's only Poland, I said. There are other 26 nations there. And they are not complaining. And if you need to make a move, you'd have gone before the EU Council, you discuss it. 
what are, what are, uh, we want to uh, adjust one or two things to make conform with our sovereignty. He refused to negotiate along that line. Instead, he's in the court against the wish and aspiration of the Polish uh, nation uh, such that it will contravene the relationship they have with the EU. So a lot of persons have come out, politicians, activists, even musicians, they have come out to say, we don't agree with that declaration by the law court that we want to remain the way we've been. But because the president, uh, the prime minister the has minister. An, an ulterior motive, he is hiding under the guise that uh, there's incompatibility. There is no new law by the EU. They have been existing for a long time. So why is it now they are not seeing the incompatibility? So is that uh, aspect of incompatibility that he's using to try to exit? He, he doesn't know that people have a foresight. He is challenged by the foresight of the other Polish uh, citizens. That he thought you could just um, twist them, come up with certain rules or laws, and before they will know it, everybody is neck deep into big troubles. But now they were able to extrapolate that what the Prime Minister is doing is to exit EU. Mm. And different persons have come up. While they protested on Thursday, here, uh, no, on Sunday, they protested on Sunday that uh, the, the, the government uh, uh, made a move to still go against that protest. But the protest by the Polish overwhelmed that kangaroo protest against the uh, general interest of the Polish, that, that, that they couldn't see the light of the day. So what the Prime Minister needs to do is to understand that power is not forever. It is there is a five-year term that could come back with a second term, making 10 years. And after you are done with that, next person comes in. Right. So what he's saying now is he wants to, in a way, amend the Constitution to favor his personal interests. Now, some of the people that this it can be likened to what happened uh, in Brexit, where the British uh, Parliament came up to talk about it. So people were not really in favor or in tune uh, uh, about the particular uh, proposal. They don't have to go for a referendum. Do you think they have the similarities, or this is a totally different process altogether? Yes, the, the, the plan is the same, hmm. but the procedure is a bit different. There's no referendum here now. You're, you're just talking about using the courts to overrule everything. If there was a referendum, that would make it participatory, such that uh, each aspect of the country will be represented, and by that they would discuss, either for or against. But what the Prime Minister has done now is to ignore the sensibilities of every other uh, citizen of that country to uh, use the, the courts against the people's wish. And people have risen up that this is not what we bargain for. So wisdom demands that if you really meant well for the land and the people of Poland, there should be a referendum. And in the first instance, what led to that amendment? Several judicial reforms took place. But if you saw it, that these reforms were not for the general interests of this country, Poland. So they're asking for a reversal of what the Prime Minister has done or he used the courts to do. So is that reversal or irreversal that is a challenge right now? So what we expect as, as an observer is to ensure that the Prime Minister will listen to the people, not necessarily listening to the civic uh, platform uh, uh, party. He is thinking that is a, is, is a challenge between his party and the party of Tusk. Hmm. That's not it. All, there is a multi-party uh, uh, system. It's not a two-party system. So every other person uh, at the larger scale wants to remain in EU. So only the party, PIS, cannot keep uh, uh, what call it, uh, Poland away from EU. They can't. Hmm. Wow. Now, now, does it mean that from what people are like doing right now in Poland, talking about 80 to 90 percent of the populace in Poland coming out to say no to that perceived fear, do you think they are going against the courts? Well, if you say they are going against the courts, mm -hmm. that was the handiwork of the prime minister. Mm -hmm. You won't set rules. You won't set rules 
and nobody should break them. If there's a law, there must be a way to break the law. Oh, you just hold on. I want to go for a short break. When we return, you continue with the expression of a thought in this particular issue. It's all about Poland's protests. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you just joined us, this is International Forum. It is all about the Polish protests and, of course, uh, contending issues. Talking about uh, Polzit. Yeah, if I want to coin the word like that, Polzit, you know, the proposed exit of Poland from the EU. Populists are saying no, but the lawmakers, the government, are saying, I think it's high time we left the EU. But the citizens are saying, we are down with EU. We are cool what they are doing. But some people are saying also that the protest by the Polish citizens is against court ruling. Over to you, Honorable. <laughs> it's funny to say it's against court ruling. Mm. When the court ruling is anti-people, mm. what we expect is a ruthless action in the direction of a protest mm. as it happened here on Sunday. That uh, judicial reform, the Prime Minister use the courts to rule against the wish and aspiration of the people is to have a kind of power or powers, uh, a sweeping power over judges. And once he has that, the nation of Poland will be in his hand. And that's what politicians are saying, no. There should be some level of independence of the judiciary, as also clamor for in Nigeria, for instance. So the EU ruled that there should be a reversal of that aspect. The Prime Minister said, you want to do reforms. You have the right to carry out reforms. But let the reforms not deform the people. So is that aspect now uh, where politicians are saying that if you insist on that aspect of the judicial reform, you don't have kind of sweeping powers over the judges. By that, you can hire and fire and determine whatever ruling they give. And that becomes a set of dictatorship. And it's better to nip it in the bud while it's just coming up now. It's got as you get to a time, there'll be anarchy in Poland. Poland has been so stable. Their economy is stable. Their politics is stable. Everything is okay. They are doing well. Their GDP is perfect. So what we expect is that this sitting prime minister should listen to the voice of reasoning. You don't want to go there selfishly to have power by all means. But the people can see that your intentions are not towards the progress of the country of Poland. And beyond the people of Poland not seeing it in the light of the Prime Minister, the EU community also said exactly what the opposition parties are saying and what the generality of Poland people are saying that that a reform that has come by court ruling, which ought not to be, that the, the Prime Minister should revisit it. In fact, should actually act, act really reverse it. Is that reversal that is a contention now? Mm. Because the Prime Minister is insisting that the EU law is not compatible with the uh, Polish constitution. But the EU law has been there over the years. The Polish constitution has been there. What is sudden compatibility? What compatibility or incompatibility test did they conduct to push the court to now give a verdict on a matter that is anti-people, that is anti-progress? So that is a ball that in the court of the prime minister to play now. He has a responsibility to continue to ensure that who does any protest has protested against a court ruling and that person might be uh, found wanting. Or, let me listen to my people that have chosen to rule. They elected me. And also the party alone that elected him. People voted for him in mass. That if he can have a rethink and withdraw some obnoxious parts of the reforms, I'm sure Poland will come back again peacefully. Hmm. But like what you rightly said, Poland's economy is doing well. Yes. They are like at least above average, far above average. They are comfortable. Do you think that taking back their freedom, because for you to be a member of the EU, you have to surrender some part of your freedom, and that was what the British, they saw, and they said, look, we can't just work with this group. We have to pull out. We want our own thing. We want our own freedom. We want our own rule to govern our people. I don't think that would be an advantage 
for the Polish uh, uh, citizens just to be on their own. After all, uh, when they were on their own, they were not complaining. Poland. And now, talking about imposing the EU law over the Polish law, do you think the Prime Minister is making sense in all this? Mm. Let's pull out. I, I beg to differ from that word, imposition. Mm. Nothing was imposed. It's a union. It, EU is not a country. There are 27, including uh, Poland. These are things you have been uh, enjoying over the years. These are laws or rules you have been abiding by over the years. That was different from what the UK did to leave the EU. It was not personalized. It was the Prime Minister of, of UK that said, I am going to leave by distorting the laws uh, governing UK. That wasn't it. It was a general consensus. On the average, a large majority uh, considered to uh, the exit. But now, the Prime Minister, or if you extend it, this political party, the PIS, they are the ones saying that they should do some reforms. To say outrightly that they want to leave will not be palatable to any other person outside Poland. But he is hiding, trickishly, that they want to do some reforms. And the reforms they are doing, politicians have quickly noted, is to exit from the EU. The EU. And if those uh, uh, constitutional amendments or reforms skate through, what that follows is automatic exit from EU. Because the, the laws will have been amended in a way that the judges will have no voice. If you want to make a law, you take permission from the prime minister. What makes you a judicial staff anymore? Mm -hmm. There should be some level of independence. If not 100%, but a reasonable level of independence for the good of the people of Poland. So the, the exit of UK from EU, the, the, the intention is different from what Poland is doing. It wasn't the Prime Minister that did that. There was no uh, obnoxious judicial reform that led to the exit or the intended exit. But what uh, EU did in case of UK, they saw this with them. There was no argument. There was no protest that, that much as you have in uh, Poland now. So what the uh, politicians in Poland are saying is to bring uh, that the Prime Minister wants to bring them into captivity. And take note that they have five years per term. So with these reforms now, it's going to live there as long as he wants to live. So those reforms, the EU has said, will not uh, showcase true uh, fundamental human rights on the part of the citizens of Poland. So why would you just rise up a platform that you were given under democracy to come on board, now you want to upturn the table to now drag people into an unwanted and irrelevant anarchy just overnight using the law court. And the, 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 the judiciary has compromised in that direction. Mm -hmm. For them to have stooped so low for only one person to mastermind a change in the constitution and they are coming out to make a pronouncement as a law uh, from the judicial system that this is what it should be. They didn't even know it clearly that the law or the court verdict they gave is even against them in the judiciary. You have made yourself so cheap so that the prime minister could now control you. And the democracy like that, even if there's going to be a control like Nigeria now, that the president wants to control the judiciary, you should not be saying anything that's very obvious to everybody. They could lobby here and there, could lobby parliament to do one thing or the other. But if it now becomes a law that the prime minister has a right to move any judgment in the direction that he so pleases. Mm. So that becomes a challenge in terms of governance. All right, now in case uh, during the time of the Brexit talks, we, we had two groups, one for and of course the other group against. against. Now do you see this happening in Poland? Because what we're seeing right now, these people are saying they don't want to leave the EU, they love the EU. According to reports, over 80% of the populace are saying we want to remain. Don't you think the many 20% can just rise up and say we want Poland to be for the Polish citizens and not subject to any rule or regulation given or ordered by the European Union? That's exactly what the Prime Minister is saying, or is doing, or he has to do, or he has even done. done. Now that's what's leading to the protests. You're not listening, it's a democratic nation. If 80% or above are saying that we want to remain in EU, 
And according to one of our practitioners in Nigeria, is that a microscopic few mm. will want to exit EU. So that will now, uh, will now leave that in the hands of the Prime Minister. He knew it that if there's a referendum, that his intentions will not see the light of the day. So that's why he went through the court to give a verdict. So the intentions are not uh, towards the progress of Poland. So if he does not have an ulterior motive, should have made it open uh, in, in democracy. Or he has a good mind. You would say to various political parties that he has something in his mind that they should look at. It's not for his own party to just wake up one day to say that they want to reform the, the judiciary. There are a lot of reforms that are needed in that country. It's not the best country in the world. It's not the best in the EU. Germany is there. France is there. Mm -hmm. So any reform you want to do should be towards strengthening the country of Poland. And by that, other EU nations will learn from it. Apart from Hungary, that is in a way supporting uh, the PIS party, every other nation in, in, in the EU, every other nation is supporting uh, the opposition party that has come out to say, this thing we must stop. And it, it took uh, Mr. Tusk to lead the people out for the protest. It was one that opened the eyes of the Polish citizens in their innocence that look at what this man is dragging us into. Mm. Of course, they saw it that uh, Mr. Tox was right. That's why they came out in mass. At the uh, city uh, center, the capital of, uh, of Poland, there's a uh, Warsaw. Warsaw, yeah. About 100,000 came out. And about 100 cities or towns again, people came out in mass to protest against that reform. Mm. As though uh, the people were very disobedient, so to speak. Why did the EU say that the Prime Minister should bring about a reversal? So the, the other EU uh, nations discovered that what the Prime Minister did using the court was anti-people. So in a, in a bit to bring the broker peace, not even to relax the part of it, it should be a total reversal of whatever law that was made on Thursday last week. But the, the, the Prime Minister is saying that uh, they are just hitting up the polity, that it didn't mean, and it does not mean, it will never mean to exit EU. But that, to intelligent minds, is not speaking the truth. It's being economical with the truth at that point. So what the politicians are insisting on, they're going to come out again. The protest is just the beginning, as we saw on Sunday. They're going to come out at, at, at a higher level to ensure that that court ruling is actually reversed. The court ruling is actually reversed. But right now, there is a country just adding fuel to fire or trying to, in their own way, pacify the situation. What does Hungary have to gain, or what do they really stand to gain in all of this? Hungary is, is, is just is a show spoiler. Hmm. That is not what you're doing in your nation. If that is what is happening in your nation, and you want another nation to abide by it, it will be fair enough that what is good for me, I want to uh, push it out to you. But that's not what you're doing. Then somebody else is doing a thing against what you do in your country, and you are supporting that person. So that means Hungary is, is waiting for Poland to, to, to go, go in flames. And if that happens, I don't even know what they, uh, they are going to gain from it. But Germany is insisting for a reversal. France wants a reversal on behalf of EU. And that reversal to me, as a person, as a Nigerian, it should be with immediate effect. Mm -hmm. If you want to leave a union, they should have cogent reasons. If you were not so comfortable with the compatibility or incompatibility of uh, your constitution and the EU law, there's a forum for that. You don't have to have dragged your court into it. Whenever and wherever you meet as an EU, you table it that we want to have some peculiarities. And those peculiarities will be discussed at the EU level. And once uh, two, three or more opinions will look at it and say, okay, add one, remove one, then take back to your country for peaceful coexistence. He ignored them. And I'm very sure from the standpoint of the Prime Minister, he would have hinted the EU of his intentions. And maybe outrightly, maybe they'll tell him, ah, no, 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 that's, that's against the EU uh, code. Uh, code. Mm. And he said, oh, in quotes, to hell. 
I go back to my country, I have a sovereign country, but that sovereignty has a global effect. Mm -hmm. You want to be sovereign against uh, the peaceful coexistence of other nations around you. So that is what the challenge is now, that the opposition party is saying that that law or court ruling should be reversed. All right. Now, if you take a look at the situation, some of the people that since uh, uh, Britain left the EU, that EU will not remain the same because other members may want to follow suit. Do you think that Poland is among those nations testing the waters? Yes. Uh, there's a law, law, law of mass action. Mm. In ordinary terms, you see people rushing in a direction without knowing why you want to join them to run. If Britain left EU, why did they leave? Not that they are leaving. Why did they leave? And if you have known why they left, you go to the next stage, how did they leave? So the uh, Prime Minister of Poland is not considering these two questions. Why they left? When, uh, they, what made them to leave? Then how did they initiate the exit? So the way he's going about it in, in, in Poland is, is suspicious. The other politicians are against it. You have not convinced us enough. If we are convinced, as they did in Britain, that we need to exit EU, let it be the consensus amongst us here. Once we have all agreed, if you come to meet us, we join EU by choice, so we can also exit by choice. But now a larger percentage is saying that they want to remain. EU will stay. You need to have seen their placards written. They want to stay. So if the Prime Minister does not have an ulterior motive, he should have been able to carry the people of Poland along. There are not even many, about 37.95 million. million yeah. you know, that has a few states in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So you could have been able to, to reach out to all of them if you had a good commodity to sell. He's not a good marketer. As a good marketer, no matter how bad your product is, there's a way you will market it. Mm -hmm. But now he's using force. If he's using force at this level, what will happen if EU did not intervene. So he is saying that EU had no right whatsoever to intervene in, their, in the things that have to do with their territorial integrity. But that is not in consonance with the EU agreement that you are into. If you want to make a law, you consider a larger population, not just personal. You are, you are, you are, you are indulging a, a personalization of power. You are not the owner of Poland. You are not the first prime minister. Yeah, of course, you can be the last. So if there's a need for you to conceive the exit from EU, it would have been a kind of a consensus. You call people around, even opposing parties, say this is about our lives, it's about our sovereignty. Don't you think we should leave for one to three reasons? Then these other uh, opposition parties, they are also human beings. The sovereignty of their nation is of utmost concern to them also. And they would have seen the need, if any, why they should exit. Not by come to make some laws as if you, are, you want to actually bring about the betterment of this nation in this generation, which is far from it. Mm -hmm. So people have seen it clearly that the intentions of this man will not be towards the progress of the people of Poland. Mm, towards the progress of the people of Poland. Now, do you see... Apart from Poland and Hungary supporting uh, the elite in Poland to exit this union, do you see any other country having the same notion in mind? Though they are not bold enough to come out to say we want to leave this union, do you see them existing in the European Union? That's why I'm suspecting Hungary. Hmm. Because you are not practicing what you are supporting now. It, uh, Hungary wants Poland to just uh, go Poland, go Poland, and <laughs> let's see the end of it. You go and you test the waters while I stand at the shore. If you get drowned, I will run back. If you're able to get through to the other side, then I'll follow you. So Hungary may be having that intention. Not, not, uh, it will be surprising. Because why would you support a nation that is planning to exit in a, in quote, in a dubious way? against the people they are supposed to protect their interest. Why would you support? Maybe they, they, they are doing that uh, with the intention, within a short while, if they succeed in Poland, they will likely queue up. Mm. 
And I don't know why they are running away from EU. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I wonder why that <laughs> is running away from uh, uh, EU. Now, before we call it to wrap on this show, how do you think this protest will, you know, uh, uh, how will it either, either come to an end or escalate? How do you think this will pan out? For them to reverse this, the, 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 the court judgment, so to speak, or it is going to be another group coming up to say, we want to leave the EU and be leader for random. What do you think this will take finally? I, at the moment, when EU said the Prime Minister should create a reversal of that reform, what the Prime Minister said in a very funny way, he said, you are the ones saying we want to exit EU. We are not ready to, and we are not willing to exit. So, in other words, this protest will last longer. Mm -hmm. The reforms he has made, he has made. He is telling you he's making those reforms, but we are not exiting. And by that, you are holding sway to power. You are having control over all the judges per time as you want it. So, this protest will continue, not until and unless there is a move towards the reversal of these uh, uh, reforms that the Prime Minister has instituted. Okay. That's the only way there will be a calmness in the protests. But you, you don't see violence emanating from any angle? Violence is eminent because mm. it will get to a point the, the Prime Minister will, will feel embarrassed and want to use the security against the people that are supposed to live peacefully. Mm. Mm. All right. Well... Let's see how all this will pan out because uh, massive protest is ongoing right now in Poland. Over 80% of the citizens are saying we don't want to leave EU. But according to report that is against the court judgment, bind them from doing such. After all, according to Poland, they want to have their own independence just like Britain. But think about it. There was a Brexit. Is there going to be a post-it? And after that, what do you think which other country we have it in mind to leave that great union, European Union? Well, Honorable Frank, thank you so much for coming on today's show. It's a pleasure. I appreciate thank you. your coming. Thank you so much. Let's see how all this will pan out. See you next week, God willing.